Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I thought I'd do a quick video today on my thoughts on prepping for the coronavirus situation. Um, it's, there's talk of going into lockdown in Australia and it's all a little bit crazy but anyway. Um, so basically I haven't been panic buying. Uh, main reason is because we are on this challenge where we only eat what we grow, forage for, barter for or um, purchase with what we sell. I have stocked up on a few extra bags of sugar and vinegar because um, while I do grow everything, um, I do need to preserve it because part of growing your own food is preserving it for when you can't grow as much in winter. We're coming into winter, it's the beginning of autumn and I'm getting all my winter plantings ready um, but I'm also harvesting everything from summer and the shelves have been bare so there hasn't been any loo paper, tissues, paper towel, rice, pasta. Um, canned foods. I haven't really looked too much detail because I don't buy that stuff anyway but when I have quickly walked past um, to get my sugar and stuff I have noticed that there have been really bare shells especially rice and pasta and the canned foods. Um, yeah so I think they're the main things that are going because they're shelf stable um, but the sugar's gone, flour's gone as well um, and yeah so it's just a minute, been a bit, bit of a whirlwind. Never experienced anything like this in our lifetime here in Australia. So um, this is all very new <laughs> um, and just dealing with the, the crazy. It's just all a bit new to get your head around this new normal for a little while or maybe for a long while. I don't really know. Um, so yes, I have been stocking up on a few extra things and I'm going to take you and show you those. Um, I'm also going to show you my pantry. But... First of all, I want to talk about how I'm dealing with this. Um, so I'm dealing with this by organizing my seeds. <laughs> because that is my food source. Uh, we are lucky enough to be able to grow all our own food here. Um, but even if you were in suburbia, you can still grow a lot of your own food. Um, but this just ensures that we've got food on the table and in our kids' bellies. And we can share our excess too. We've got plenty of excess that we do share around. Um, so I'm just going to turn this around and show you what I've been doing. Um, I'm also going to say that I have maybe panic bought some seeds. Well, it's not really panic bought. It's just I have a bit of a seed addiction. And any excuse to buy seeds, well, this is a good excuse to buy seeds. <laughs> so I bought some extras, things that I will need. Um, to get us through spring and if there was a seed shortage I do use heirloom seeds so I can save my own seeds um, but I haven't done too much of that um, this year mainly because things haven't gone to seed yet um, but I do have some stockpiled seeds um, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to store those too so I'm going to flip you around and show you so this is my seed stash these are my big packs of seed with um, saved um, you know home saved seeds I can't fit those in my little wooden boxes. Um, so here I've got mainly my pumpkins and my beans and some peas as well. So I know that they're in bulk packs and they're in this container. I've also got flowers in here, flower seeds. Um, and then there's some perennials here that, yeah. So over here I've got my seeds that are open and I've organized them um, by type, so beans and then let's see, beetroot, brassicas, other brassicas, broccoli, you know, you get the drift. And so these are all my open packets of seeds. And then over here are all my packets of seeds that are surplus. Um, lots of these I've just bought. So I've got an heirloom mix of beans, which once I run out of beans over here, <coughs> excuse me, I can then go over here and open them up. So you've got a lot of things in here, things that grow easily and quickly, things that take a lot longer to grow, just a good mix of food that we like to eat. So this here is my wine fridge that I got for free and in here I age my cheese that I make but I'm also going to be storing my seeds because it's at a constant temperature, it's fairly dark in this room and um, yeah, it's humidity controlled and that's what you need to keep your seeds for a long time. So this here is my stash. Um, these are things that I'm not using until I absolutely need to. So I've got some rice, some oats because the kids have been eating that for breakfast, lots of sugar and a couple of dried beans. I've noticed that um, canned beans, they've gone off the shelf 
but dried produce like these beans haven't um, moved at all and they take a whole lot less space they're a whole lot cheaper and um, they're super easy to cook and if you're stuck at home for two months because you can't go to work you've got no excuse but not to cook your own beans hey there's also some split green peas are coming into winter that's an easy quick soup and some barley which I'll pop into soups as well so this stuff I've had to buy out of my fund sorry not out of my fund because um, I haven't got enough to spend $100 on a crap load of sugar and stuff. So I have been buying this stuff out of the money from my fund. Um, I've sold some garlic, so I've got about $50 in my fund. Um, and I'll just come in here and do my shop and then mark it off my list and my receipts so I can still keep a tally of how much I'm spending each month on this challenge. So with the sell part of the challenge, the grow, forage, butter and sell, I sell my surplus produce mainly my garlic at the moment because it is garlic planting time coming up so in the next month or so um so i'm selling my garlic and yeah it's been good it's been it, it's meant that i've been able to buy stuff like this rice and sugar and some coffee for paul um we don't buy a lot of food it's mainly vinegar and sugar and spices um i've just added oats in because the kids have been enjoying a hot breakfast so that's um that's that part of the um, the challenge. Over here is where I ferment everything. And now I'm going to take you through my pantries and I'm going to show you everything that's going on in there and behind me. So over here I'm brewing some kombucha just for some gut health because mine took a turn when I had to take some antibiotics for an abscess. Um, I've got some apple cider vinegar going. I'm going to do another thing of apple cider vinegar and another thing of kombucha just so I can have um, continuous supply. I've made some fire cider here. This is all with homegrown goodies. Um, another lot of kombucha. This one is a rosella or hibiscus um, kombucha. That's a family favorite. Um, I've been pickling cucumbers whole, fermenting them, I should say. Um, so they should last through the winter. Also great for gut health. Here is another batch of um, those Polsky gherkies um, fermenting away. This is a fermented hot sauce made with our jalapenos. This here is a um, thieves vinegar. Have you heard the story about the bubonic plague and how these guys used to um, go into these mansions and rob the rich after they had died? I believe it was some, someone in royalty, I think it was the queen, had got them arrested, brought them in and questioned them to see how they were going about with this plague around and they weren't getting sick and this is the recipe they were using. It's a vinegar with herbs from, um, infused into it. So I can do a video on that in the next couple of days if anyone is interested in learning how to make this. Just to keep them well during this cold and flu season, especially with this virus going around that's got everyone scared. It's actually really delicious. I'm really enjoying drinking it. So I've made a second batch there. Um, Behind it is some fermented garlic in honey, also great for immune system. What have I got here? Some fermented garlic in high quality red wine vinegar. That won't be ready for another 20 years. <laughs> that one's a bit of an investment, but we can sample that after a year. And then here is another batch of fire cider. Got some of my ex excess um, zucchinis here. These are out of the bins that I pick up from the supermarket, kind of like dumpster diving, but legally. Um, so I'm thinking of squeezing these and freezing them for use in winter. Um, I've got some apple cucumbers there, some cherry tomatoes ripening up, some tomatillos, and some um, foraged apples, some gifted nashi pears, and these plums were given to us. So that's pretty cool. That's that section done. In here I've got my stockpile of preserves. This is why I'm not scared because I grow all my own food and I have the skills to preserve it. We have bread and butter pickles, some more cucumber pickles, tomato sauce, preserved apples, dried lemon verbena, a heap more pickles. We've got jams down here and this is a zucchini relish, tallo, um, homemade soap at the back, pickling liquid, heaps of honey. These are garlic scapes that have been pickled. They're really yummy. Um, we've got a heap of plum barbecue sauce um, and Worcestershire sauce and more jams and a heap of um, 
pickled beetroot. And here I've got more honey, this is off the farm, um, some more zucchini relish, um, a few different pickles and preserves, got a heap more beetroot down here, heap more zucchini pickles here and um, cucumber pickles here. Now these drawers haven't changed much since my very first video on our challenge, except for maybe this bag, I bought this last month, five kilos of chickpeas, should keep us going for a while, but all these were stuff I had pre-challenge, so I haven't really eaten as much as I thought we would. And it's the same in this drawer here. These are my excess spices. I have topped that up quite a bit. These are my teas for making kombucha. My salt's gone down a little bit, but I do have another 25 kilo bag, I believe. I really need to clean in here. You don't realize until you take a video and you look through the camera and you're like, wow, that's dirty. Didn't notice that before. <laughs> Okay, next cupboard. These are not preserves in here. This is all bought food. Again, not much of this was, <coughs> excuse me, topped up since the challenge. The only thing I've had to buy is this olive oil. Um, and everything else in there is pre-challenge. So just working through it slowly. And it's the same in this drawer. The only thing but the flour and sugar and some rice. They're things that we bought. Oh, and the vinegar. Excuse me. And I have bought some more mustard because, yum, mustard. It's good. And everything else in there is all pre-existing that we're working through. And in here, these are also bin potatoes. So some that potatoes that we've um, dumpster dived. And I have bought some um, more wraps and noodles. They're dried herbs from the garden. The last thing of sugar there. Oh no, there's another one here. Um, this is a sugar with molasses in it still. So yeah, this, this drawer is probably going down a bit and I have replenished the rice um, a bit. I've also got three big pots full of beetroot that I'm cooking so I can pop them in jars and pickle those too. I've also got my veggie patch full of plants, full of food. So that should keep us sustained for quite some time. I've got another veggie patch over there, the same size as this, and I've got some more veggie patches behind me, which are probably maybe a third of the size of this area. Um, so plenty of food in there, I'm not worried about it. And over here, I've been starting a heap of seeds. So this is all my um, autumn and winter plantings. I did end up buying these because, just because of everything that's going on. Um, I've already got some in the ground over here, as you can see, growing. I've got some broccoli and cauliflowers um, that are the same age as that in the ground. But I wanted an in-between seeds, so kind of an in-between stage to these. So we did buy some. So I've just got some broccoli, collie, and cabbage. Um, they are just Bunnings ones, unfortunately. I couldn't go to the market today to get the ones that I usually get from my local lady. So I've got a few trays full of seeds and little sprouts and same here. These ones got burnt in the hot house on a hot day we had. Um, so I've just re sown those today actually. And this is my freezer whiteboard and I write down everything I've got in the freezer and then I mark out when I take something out. So I know um, what I've got left. So these are full of veggies and um, homegrown meat. So. So I think what the big issue is, is that people have lost their pioneer skills. The skills of self-sufficiency. People don't know or cannot grow their own food anymore. They don't have space to rear their own animals and they don't have time to tend to a veggie patch. We've also grown up, I mean, all I've ever known is the supermarket. Um, and that's really from the 60s that processed foods have become the norm to make our lives easier, which is great. But it's not because now we have forgotten and we've lost the skills to grow our own food and to cook from scratch. Um, so I think people are panicking because they haven't got their skills anymore and um, they haven't got their systems up and running. They haven't got their veggie patches going. And I've had a heap of people message me going, what do I need a plant for winter? I'm trying to get my veggie patch going because of all this coronavirus stuff. And that's fantastic, but you got to think that in winter, things take forever to grow. Um, 
you're looking at five months before you get a crop. So I'm not feeling too concerned. I feel like we're prepared for lockdown, whatever that means for us. Um, we pretty much hermits anyway, so it's not really changing our way of life. We both are on the farm full time, so it's not going to be weird. And we homeschool our kids, so that's also not going to be weird. It's just going to be normal for us, <laughs> which is weird. But anyway, um, it's got people freaking out. And I understand that, but um, I also don't. I can't get my head around it. Um, but I just wanted to put this video out on how we're preparing and how we feel prepared. If you've got any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And we'll see you next time on the vlog.